Hey everyone, it's me again. I uh, was going to do an update video comparing to some of the old stuff. What we have here is uh, we're going to look at Omaha, Nebraska as a reference point. And there's a lot of significant flooding in this area of the Elkhorn between Fremont and Omaha. There's a lot of major roads and highways that took a lot of damage because, well, there's a lot of commuters between these two areas. So there's a lot more infrastructure to get uh, washed up. But we'll let the big boys media companies cover that. I'll try to get to another time. We'll go up to my neck of woods of West Point, Nebraska. Now, in the old video, there's this country road here that we took off from. You might recognize it. And I went over to the Highway 32 right here and shot up and down Highway 32 from the Highway 32 bridge. And then there's this blacktop road that we never noticed in the other video because it was all underwater. What I'm going to do is show you the original clip from where we took off with uh, the drone. This is what it looked like on March 15th. You'll notice all that white cap. It's uh, water rushing over the road and falling on the other side. This is what the road looks like today. As you notice is where that white cap was is it was doing a lot of damage. And we never saw those three culvert pipes that are there at the bottom of the screen because that was underwater. And that water washed away the road on top of it and even pushed one of those pipes out into the field a little bit. Now I'm going to fly forward a little bit and juxtapose it to the old clip. This is from the 15th. Notice those round bales in the field. That tree line on the other side of the tree line is the Elkhorn River. And going back to March 5th, or this is March 20th. Again, there's those round bales at the top of the screen close to the tree line. That was all in a field that is was underwater. Now the water is receded, and the river is back, uh, back be, by the trees again, going under the bridge over on the right-hand side of the screen. That's Highway 32 going into West Point. Now you'll notice that the, the river still is a little high, and it's got quite a bit of speed. So the water's receded, but it's still elevated, but at least it's contained. And what I'm gonna do is go back to some March 15th clips. Here it was on March 15th. You'll notice the white caps going over the road. This is a section of Highway 32 that's called the curves because it curves twice before it brings it into West Point. So there you go. See so curves there goes all the way. So this whole thing was underwater. This is what it looks like today. Fortunately, uh, from what I could tell, there wasn't a lot of damage um, to the highway itself. You'll probably have noticed that in some other clips where there's a lot more ice chunks going over roads, it just tore the road to pieces and they're completely impassable. Highway 32 though, it looks like when I saw this truck here, uh, I wanted to follow him a little bit to see what they're working on. It would look like that uh, over the years they had all these potholes that were filled and all those fillers have been washed away. And I think what this crew is doing is just refilling the potholes and some of them were massive ones. I think there's a couple that we'll see, not necessarily close up. Uh, you'll notice that I'm flying comfortably above those power lines um, because in another video, I'll explain what happened, but I had a drone hit a power line and there's a, there's a funny story related to it. And, or as, as funny as I can try to make of a poor situation, but, uh, it clipped one and it took a little damage. So now I'm overly cautious and trying to fly a little bit higher, or if I'm low, I fly even slower. But again, that's another video. Uh, let's take a look at this cement culvert here. That culvert uh, looks like it's holding up, but there's examples across the state where those cement culverts have been compromised and they're starting to collapse and they takes the road with them. Uh, again, as I said, I think they're just refilling potholes, that white line or that black line right there uh, across the road looks like it's just asphalt filler for the pothole and every, every little segment of concrete in there has a little bit of potholes that need to be replaced. This is going back to the country road that we took off from. I wanted to look down, uh, get an angle from here. So give you an idea how wide the road is supposed to be and what it looks like today. Uh, you'll notice that 
uh, any any and all gravel is gone. Uh, there's usually a pretty sturdy base that is built up for the road to be uh, built onto, or you put more gravel on, and the base is gone, and everything has to be rebuilt. Additionally, there, you probably notice there's some underground cables that have been exposed. I think those are probably data cables, but I'm not so positive that I would go find out for myself. Usually the power lines, uh, <clears throat> usually the power lines are hung up on the poles that are next to this road. So why they would have power lines above and buried below is beyond me. So I'm guessing they're data cables. Uh, again, that's a guess. Uh, Whatever, whatever they are, it's going to be a problem when it comes to repairing these roads. Uh, you'll notice it's hard to get a sense of how deep it, that is. Some of these where people can stand in it and it's up to their waist. And these culvert pipes might give you a sense of scale as far as like how deep that cut is on the left-hand side, that drop-off. Uh, that water was strong enough and... It applied force for enough time where it uncovered all these pipes and then it was able to push one out into the field, started to remove it. And it looks like the pipes are reusable, but I don't know. I don't know what the uh, procedure is as far as like do they replace it or not. So we'll zoom out from West Point, go seven or eight miles up river to Beamer. In the old video, I took off from two locations, one up uh, by Indian Trails, which is where my cursor's at, another one down at the intersection where the bridge crosses. This next clip is gonna be from the top of the hill by Indian Trails. That'll be the first location. This is what it looks like on March 20th. The water has receded, and in the uh, center of the screen, or as it comes into the center of the screen, from, uh, the bottom third, you'll see all that, those chunks there. That's ice chunks that have gotten deposited there, I believe. And this is a comparison of March 15th on the top and March 20th on the bottom. So it'll give you a sense like how much that river expanded and how much it has receded. And here's something where <clears throat> to the untrained eye, uh, you'll see this old clip from the 15th of the road and of the river, but there's something that, uh, to the untrained eye, you probably wouldn't have noticed in this shot. And I didn't notice it until I talked to some of the guys that were surveying the bridge in the area around it. And they gave me a sense of how much, uh, how much farther we have to go when it comes to recovery. You might see it in the left-hand side that little curve there, right here. This is directly above the bridge, where I'm shooting directly above the bridge. And if I look up, you'll notice that the river, and this is what made the excavating crew that was surveying the area kind of nervous, that river is cutting itself a new path. It's carving into the field, and it's gonna try to cut its way across a new section of that street. So this is a huge problem. I want you to look at it. I'm going to put it on a loop and then put it on slow motion. You have water going from left to right on the screen and then it hits that bank and now it's going from top to bottom on the screen. So I kind of, the way I envisioned it or the analogy I have is imagine like a, a NASCAR race where the car has a straight line to build up a whole lot of speed and it races into that curve and hits that curve with all that speed and starts to peel away the dirt as it comes out of that curve. So as it hits that curve and starts to get redirected to go back down to the bottom of the screen, it's just taking a little bit more of the dirt with it every time it goes. So a little bit more, a little bit more. And in, in time, eventually this is gonna carve itself a new path for the river. Uh, and so they are tasked with the, uh, the, the problem solving is trying to figure out how to refill that area with dirt or buffer it somehow so it stops doing that. I don't know what the process is. Once I realized it, I was kind of flabbergasted as far as like how big of a problem we still have, even though the water is gone, the recovery is like a long ways out. 
That previous shot was this road here. You notice there's a bunch of white capping as the water dropped off on the other side. We've seen this before earlier in the video. Looks like this road is traversable. Uh, early on, this was one that was traveled or opened up early for traffic. And it's gotten a lot of traffic lately because it's one of the few spots to cross. You'll notice that deep shadow on our side of the road that we're looking from. That deep shadow is essentially a giant hole that's been carved out. So you can drive this road. However, you want to make sure you stay on the road because as soon as your tire goes off onto the shoulder a little bit, it's not just um, like a little damage on the sidewall of your tire. It's going to total your car. Like it'll suck it in and you'll your car will ride the rails like a skateboarder would with his skateboard and pretty much just disassemble everything underneath your vehicle. So it's a tightrope act whenever you're going down this thing. And there's a uh, hay buster machines that are pretty wide that use this street too. So uh, there's a few nervous moments on this street as you're driving it. Okay, so I'm going to end the video, but I want to make a quick announcement. What I've noticed is this weird phenom, and it's not happening a lot, but it happened a couple times this last week where I was walking through a gas station while doing my day job or dropped my kid off at school or something, and someone will be like, hey, you're that drone guy. I'm like, yeah, I'm the drone guy. And there's kind of like this really uh, rewarding exchange where they really enjoyed the video, and I was really happy to see someone that enjoyed the video, and we went back and forth about it, and I don't know, I felt pretty good about it. Uh, and everyone's like, you should do more, make more videos. And then sometimes in the YouTube comments, not a lot, but every once in a while, someone's like, oh, you should be getting paid to do this, or someone should be hiring you to do this. And then other ones are saying, this is a great example of citizen journalism. And I really like the idea of citizen journalism or independent journalism. The problem is it costs money and I'm going to do it regardless. One way or another, I'll find the time and money to do it myself because I enjoy it. But if you want to see it done more, I'm going to start a PayPal link uh, in my channel. It's going to be under the About section, I think. And you can find a link that says Donate or Tip. I call it a tip. It's a way of saying, hey, I want you to do more. So, you know, here's two bucks for a gallon of gas or uh, here's a dollar because, you know, it entertained me for 10 to 15 minutes. And I appreciate that. Here's a buck or something to that effect. I don't care.